Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is update, I guess, on the building uh, AI for the BXGS weekly. So I've been doing quite a bit of things over the week duration. Unfortunately, couldn't stream because our weather has been pretty bad, and I had basically a few migraines, uh, and you know, was half dead most of the time. And whenever I wasn't, it was I was either too tired or it was too late to actually do anything at home. So no streams this week. But anyway, I uh, decided to do some work anyway. And uh, what I did was I set up the new AI branch under the BXJS website repository. For now, it's basically the Next.js with uh, Tailwind, Fastify and Mongoose. But unfortunately, it seems like this is not gonna work. Uh, let me explain why. So as I already told, I've been playing around um, with TensorFlow.js as well as a bunch of other related packages to try and build a classifier for Twitter. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like JavaScript worlds of machine learning and TensorFlow specifically is quite up to the task of what we want to do here uh, quite yet. At least, you know, maybe I just didn't figure it out. But uh, the problem is, so let me first explain how the current classification works. There's actually a really good set of tutorials available on TensorFlow website on working with text. And one of them goes in depth into basically what I'm going to talk about right now. So if you are, you know, want to know more about those things, just go ahead and read through that. So how does text classification with uh, TensorFlow works? Well, you cannot just throw in the text into neural network and expect some output, right? Neural networks do not work on text, they actually expect tensors, well, in, you know, in TensorFlow case, right? So you need a way to transform text to tensors to those matrices. And uh, one way of doing that is word embeddings. As I said, again, this is like a whole article here explaining what word embeddings are. But the gist is essentially, this is a feature vectors that are x dimensional, I mean, uh, you know, depending on the model you're using that transforms the text into vectors, there will be a different set of dimensions. Um, in this case, for the JavaScript, there is a universal sentence encoder light, which is a pretty good model, actually. So it it's, uh, it converts text into 512 dimensional embeddings. It seems to work really well for classification tasks. So the TensorFlow JS has the um, a few examples for uh, sentiment classification as well textual similarity analysis. In those cases, they work really well, but uh, the USC model is also pretty small, it seems. So like it only has like 8K word piece vocabulary and it seems like it's been trained on relatively small data sets and seems like it only works for some very specific use cases, basically. I've tried to build a Twitter uh, classifier based on top of this and while it works, the results are not perfect, let's put it this way. So basically, the problem is that even though the when you get the accuracy for the TensorFlow model, using this encoder, uh, you get something like 95%, but it does have a lot of false positives and false negatives, purely because at least it's my guess purely because there is so much slang and you know, the JavaScript specific language that is just probably wasn't used in creating this encoder. So it just either emits it or misses it or something like that. This is my guess, at least, you know, if you're working with this stuff, and you know, um, why it might happen exactly do let me know, because I'm curious about the uh, more in depth background on that. But I unfortunately don't have time to dig into this. Now, this is problem number one, right? So if if I would to use Python, I could use something like BERT, which is considered to be basically state of the art word embeddings. It's trained on a very big data sets like 800 million words. Uh, what was it Google Books Corpus, I think, and then Wikipedia as well. And this one is, is really, really good. And it works uh, very well for well, pretty much any cases with text processing, right when you need to convert text to embeddings. Now, um, unfortunately, BERT is not available for JavaScript. So while this Universal sentence quarters light version again, not the full version is available and you can just require it as a JavaScript package and work with it. BERT is I for whatever reason is not there, right? So you can use it in Python, there's like multiple packages that allow you to do that. But for JavaScript, that's just not the case, I guess, you know, the community is just not quite as involved into machine learning uh, area as the Python one, I guess. 
But yeah, so this is problem number one. Uh, I basically want to switch to using BERT to process tweets, which I'm guessing is going to produce better results just by doing that. Now, the second problem is TensorFlow.js. Uh, what is up with the website? There we go. TensorFlow.js is lagging behind Python version of TensorFlow significantly, and it is ridiculous at how much it is. Now, the thing is that if you use Python TensorFlow, right, there's a lot of prepared utilities that are very high level and that basically you can just take and use, right? Like, say you want Boosted Trees classifier. There you go. There's a class for that. You can just initialize it, throw in the data in it, put the parameters, and you got your Boosted Trees classifier. You want a linear classifier, they have a class for it. You want a binary classifier, they have a class for it. You want like basically whatever, right? There's a ton of them. There's like a lot of things. There's specific utilities for images. There's specific utilities for audio. Whatever you can imagine, whatever the use cases for using TensorFlow, there's likely high level classes for that, high level utilities that basically allow you to do it in a few lines of code. Now, JavaScript, well, that's a different story completely. Um, essentially, it's just, sensors and low level utilities. So it's like, hey, you want to do a binary classifier? Well, here's, uh, you know, here's the layers, here's the model. So construct it yourself, basically. It's like the tensor Lego. And while it works, so for something as simple as the binary classifier, it's basically, you know, three, four layers at most, and it's not that hard to do. Assembling something like boosted trees classifier is not something that I really want to do myself. Like I know how complex that would be. And uh, yeah, that's just not as convenient, essentially. I don't know if you can hear my cat, but she's been going crazy, it especially like started at the moment when I started recording the video. I don't know why. Anyway, uh, coming back to that. So basically, yes, TensorFlow.js is severely lacking in high level utilities. And while, you know, again, assembling binary classifier is relatively simple, going doing something more complex is going to be a pain in ass. And again, lack of bird is annoying as well. Uh, now, coming back to the website itself, so I initially thought that we would have a Fastify server that has the Twitter bots, uh, RSS readers, whatever, the sources, right? So it just runs in the background as a scheduled task, for example, checks them every X minutes, pulls them in, throws them into the TensorFlow, produces the class classification uh, results, so basically, you know, pass fail, and then adds it to the website database. Um, unfortunately, that's not going to work, right? Because we are no longer using JavaScript for machine learning. Um, so that's not going to fly, right? So which means we need to have a separate service uh, using Python that would handle the classification for us and then somehow connect this to JavaScript. Um, I will need to think about that, but uh, my initial thoughts are basically, so obviously I want to still use Next.js. I want to still use um, Tailwind. I think that's basically given right now, right? So you, if you watched any of my streams, you know this is my typical setup. I'm no longer sure about Fastify Mongoose. We, maybe we don't need this at all. Again, no longer sure it makes sense to put the Twitter bot in JavaScript. Maybe it does, we'll see. Uh, but, you know, from like quick thoughts, a few things that I've basically um, been looking at, maybe we go with Hasura for the backend, because it has those actions and triggers, right? So we can have basically scheduled triggers for um, our very small, simple, uh, what do you call it? Twitter service, for example, right? Or I don't know, whatever. So we have we can have a separate service that would do the um, getting the data from the sources, right? Be it Twitter, RSS, whatever. We can use Node.js for that. That would be very simple. Uh, you can have a cron trigger here, which is perfect. And then we can have actions. So basically, whenever one of those services writes to Hasura, we can have the action handler that actually calls Python. Uh, I believe you can do the web service calls in this case, if I remember correctly. But anyways, like there's no uh, clear. Yeah, so there you go. You can basically tell it to call a web hook whenever something happens, right? And this is exactly what we want. So we're going to have a separate Python microservice that would just focus on either classifying tweets or classifying articles, right? And then once this is done, at some point, we're going to have, I guess, oh, yeah, right. It's just going to be this ske another scheduled task that would happen once a week that would assemble, that would do this boosted trees classifier and assemble the final episode, right? That's basically what we need. 
So from the first glance, seems like Hasura would work quite well. Um, again, I still need to play around with Bird and Python version of TensorFlow to make sure that it actually produces better results. It might be that I'm just overthinking it and really there is not that much difference. Um, although, I, you know, I feel like the generic and um, more detailed model like Bird should produce better results. But uh, we're going to see how that ends up. Basically, I don't think I'm going to stream my... Okay, maybe I will stream the Bird and um, TensorFlow in Python um, yeah, pff, coding, basically, right? I'm forgetting words here today. And anyway, uh, so yeah, so this is... I'm not sure if I will stream it, maybe, uh, but I will definitely stream once I get around to setting up the Hasura with hooks and all that kind of stuff, right? So this is kind of the plan. Yeah, I'm, you know, very short update. Uh, if you guys are working on TensorFlow.js and maybe you know a way of using BERT in JavaScript because I, this is something I haven't actually found, um, do let me know. Again, maybe you also know some third-party libraries that provide higher level classes for TensorFlow.js. I tried to find anything like that, but uh, it just didn't seem like it's a thing. Unfortunately, like it would be very cool if we could, you know, just contain everything within one uh, monolithic app in Node.js. But again, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like this will be the case. Um, although advantage of using Hasura and Next.js without custom server means we can just slap in authentication author or I guess offload the authentication authorization to the Hasura itself. But yeah, this is kind of the gist of what I've been doing over the week. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Maybe you have some suggestions. Again, you know, if you want to read about word embeddings, about text processing in general, I'm going to leave this link in the description of the video. So feel free to dive it. There's a really good uh, explanation of what are embeddings and how they work and how to use them with machine learning, uh, which is, I guess, you know, it, it did take me quite a few um, things to understand, basically. <laughs> quite, a few, quite a few months, I would guess, to understand uh, what exactly is going on. But yeah, um, that's basically it from my side. So thank you very much for watching. Again, if you have any feedback or suggestions, feel free to throw them into the comments. Hope you enjoyed this update. I'm honestly, I don't know what's going on anymore, but I, I'm hoping we can finish this thing in the next few months. Uh, we're gonna see how, how good it will be. So basically the plan right now is to finish the very basic website, finish the Twitter classifier first, then make the website that will show us the results and just, you know, observe how it goes over a week or so and to see how good or bad are we, how many false positives or ne false negatives are there and uh, how effective is the feedback and, and, you know, relearning, retraining the model, basically. Um, but yeah, this is kind of the gist of it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for your continued support and I see you next time. Bye.